US stocks are still holding on to their post-Fed gains, as investors await developments with Russia or Ukraine negotiations, Oanda's Edward Moyer said. There is too much short-term geopolitical and economic growth risk that the rally in stocks appears like it will be capped soon. US President Joe Biden is scheduled to talk with China's Xi Jinping on Friday, in part to try to keep China from assisting Russia in its attack on Ukraine. Russian forces in Ukraine were blasting cities and in civilians, but no longer making progress on the ground, according to Western intelligence, as the war entered its fourth week. Oil climbed back above $100 US a barrel as the Kremlin cast doubts on the progress of current peace talks with Ukraine and investors weighed the absence of Russian barrels in a tight market. Futures in New York closed up 8.4% on Thursday to settle at $102.98 US dollars. Helen McCroft, head of global commodity research at RBC Capital Markets, said Russian oil export losses will likely prove injuring and that offsetting barrels are in short supply. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, Croft said, will likely continue to press for more fulsome American commitments to safeguarding their security interests before they consider parting ways with their OPEC Plus partner. Today's agenda. No local data. Overseas data, Japan February CPI, Eurozone January trade balance. Market highlights. ASX futures up 28 points, or 0.4% to 7,246 near 6.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. AUD plus 1.2% to 73.79 US cents. Bitcoin on Bitstamp, dot net minus 1.1% to 40,744.48 US dollars. As of 7.15 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. On Wall SD at 4 p.m., Dow plus 1.2% S, and P500 plus 1.2% Nasdaq plus 1.3%. In New York, BHP plus 1.6% Rio plus 2.9% Atlassian minus 0.3%. Tesla plus 3.7% Apple plus 0.7% Netflix plus 3.9% Amazon plus 2.7%. In Europe, Stocks 50 to 0.1% FTSE plus 1.3% CAC plus 0.4% DAX minus 0.4%. Spot Gold plus 0.8% to 1,943.13 US dollars per ounce at 1.41 p.m. New York time. Brent Crude plus 8.4% to 106.28 US dollars a barrel. US oil plus 7.6% to 102.26 US dollars a barrel. Iron ore plus 1% to 146.90 US dollars a ton. Two year yield, US 1.94%, Australia 1.31%. Five year yield, US 2.17%, Australia 2.18%. 10 year yield, US 2.19%, Australia 2.50%, Germany 0.38%. US prices as of 4.13 p.m. in New York. From today's financial review. Budget recovery to hit tax cap. This month's federal budget will usher in the post-pandemic shift towards debt reduction and possibly more tax cuts. Unions go for 6% wage rises amid inflation surge. Frustrated workers will no longer accept pay rises of 3 or 3.5% a year, unions say, as new forecasts predict consumer price inflation is heading towards 5%. United States Amazon said it had closed its 8.5 billion US dollar deal to buy MGM, combining the fabled movie maker behind Rocky and James Bond with the online retailing giant as it looks to draw consumers through more streaming video. Meta said it will build new tools to allow brands to prevent their ads from appearing next to unsuitable content on Facebook and Instagram, and will begin testing the tools later this year to launch in early 2023. Occidental Petroleum shares rose after Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway said it spent nearly US$1 billion on additional shares in the oil company, giving it a 14.6% stake. 
IT consulting firm Accenture forecast current quarter revenue above Wall Street estimates and flagged a potential impact to its business if the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict continued. Fed Reaction Day 2 In an op-ed in the Washington Post, Larry Summers wrote that investors were wrong in interpreting the Fed's decision and its outlook, I fear. The economic projections of the Federal Open Market Committee represent a continuation of its wishful and delusional thinking of the recent past. Summers also wrote that Fed policymakers were not being realistic, and that's a problem. It is an odd and damaging view of democratic accountability that demands disingenuous forecasts from revered institutions. In a world where financial crises are always possible, the credibility of the Federal Reserve is a precious asset. It should not be lightly sacrificed. Oanders Craig Erlam said the Fed meeting was a rarity in that the central bank quickly conformed to the market's way of thinking after months of pushback. The Fed now sees six more rate hikes this year, on top of the one announced yesterday, representing a 25 basis point increase at every meeting for the rest of 2022. And with a large minority forecasting even higher rates by year-end, the chance of a 50 basis point hike at a meeting has certainly increased. The rhetoric from Chairman Jerome Powell and his reference to the labor market being tight to an unhealthy level further supports the view that the rate of increases this year will be substantial. Now it's just a question of whether the Fed's actions, combined with moves in commodity markets, will become recessionary, something the markets may be starting to price in. Goldman Sachs' David Merkel said the Fed delivered a consistently hawkish message. Merkel said, we continue to see a meaningful risk of a 50 BP hike at some point, but we are sticking with our forecast that the FOMP will deliver 725 BP rate hikes this year, and four more next year, for a terminal rate of 2.75 to 3%. In addition, Merkel said Goldman now expects the FOMP to announce the start of balance sheet reduction at its next meeting in May. We continue to expect passive runoff with peak caps of 60 billion US dollars per month for treasury securities and 40 billion US dollars per month for mortgage-backed securities. Similar to last time, but double the pace. Europe. UK stocks erase their losses for the year, bolstered by soaring oil and metals prices that have lifted Shell and Glencore even as the war in Ukraine and rising interest rates weigh on other European markets. The FTSE 100 index of big British companies gained 1.3% Thursday, leaving it up 0.01% for the year, and wiping out a drop of almost 6%. Shell, commodities producer Glencore, and mining company Rio Tinto are among the biggest contributors to the FTSE 100's 2022 gain. Energy and basic materials companies account for almost a quarter of the index, close to double their weighting in the Pan-European Stocks Europe 600 index. The Stocks 600 is down 7.7% this year. Since its March 7 low, the index also has gotten a boost from drug makers AstraZeneca and GlaxoSmithKline. The benchmark also has a big weighting in producers of staple consumer goods such as Reckitt Bankasa Group and Unilever, which tend to fare well even when investors worry that a recession might be in the offing. The FTSE 100's relative strength in 2022 follows several years of underperformance for Britain's equities, making their valuations more attractive. Asia Chinese stocks had their biggest two-day advance since 1998, as Beijing's strong push to stabilize financial markets and stimulate the economy lured buyers back. The Hang Seng China Enterprises Index rallied 7.5%, with technology and property shares among the top gainers after officials promised to ease a regulatory crackdown and pledged support for companies in the sectors. Foreign investors turned net buyers of Chinese shares for the first time since March 4, buying a net 5.4 billion yuan of mainland stocks via trading links with Hong Kong. History shows the verbal intervention, coupled with possible follow-up policy support, can mark a market bottom. In the past seven instances where Liu Ha, China's vice premier, commented about capital markets at financial stability meetings, the mainland benchmark CSI 300 index typically stabilized over the subsequent six-month periods, with a median return of 
according to Bloomberg calculations.